In this video we're going to look at communication methods which is a way that computers uh, communicate with different devices now this could be internally on the motherboard or it could be with external devices e.g. E peripherals or across a networking. This addresses 4.9.1 on the AQA computer science specification. So when we talk about electronic data communication this involves sending or receiving data from one computing device to another. This could be anything from email to voice over internet protocol to electronic point of sale systems, applications internally within a computer system, and mobile phones communicate with each other, a cash machine, you take cash out, it needs to update your bank, and it could be internally within the CPU, which is what has been looked at in the machine architecture lessons. With the communication, it is split into two, serial and parallel. Here is an example of serial communication, and with serial, bits are sent one bit at a time over a single wire. With the advances in technology, this actually has led to a much higher data transfer speed. So, such as the most common serial cable is a USB a universal serial bus cable. As we can see here we've got a sender now the sender could be a device, a peripheral, it could be a computer um, I'll just indicate the sender here. Here is one byte that needs to be sent and here is our receiver. This is our transmission and we're sending 8 bits and one bit is sent at a time over a single transmission cable we can have transfer speeds going from say 50 megabits per second up to 100 megabits per second um, there's potential for this to be even higher serial transmission has become the most popular type of transmission the alternative is parallel and parallel is where several bits can be sent simultaneously over multiple parallel wires so several bits are sent at the same time and that's what the simultaneously means so if we've got one byte all the bits of that byte are sent across the cable all at the same time now this type of transmission we've seen on the buses on the internal components of the computer system so such as the data bus the address bus where many bits are sent at the same time to carry an address or the data from main memory. This works very well over short distances and you may be thinking well if we've got lots of wires in parallel sending lots of bits at the same time why is it this faster? And over short distances this can be faster. The problem is when we get to long distances we've got the issue that what data the bits become what's known as skewered so because of the different resistance in the material, so if this is a copper wire and each of these is a copper wire there could be a slight different resistance in each of these wires which means if we send a lot of data gradually those bits become slightly skewered and they arrive out of sequence and therefore the receiver is not receiving all the bits at the same time and if we're trying to send a lot together this data becomes out of sync becomes skewered and therefore corrupts the data and it has to be resent. Serial has reduced complexity and as I just said the parallel can arrive out of sync. Something else we can have crosstalk that creates interference between the parallel lines so this is as the electricity and the pulse down one of the wires interferes with the other. So over a greater length parallel is less effective. I like to liken this to imagine each of these bits is a car and here we've got one single racetrack. Now these cars can go at the normal speed what cars can go so ultimately if you put your foot down on the pedal you could come up to a speed of 115, 120 or more miles an hour. If each car is allowed to go one at a time and there's nothing else on that track that car can put its foot down and fly from one end to the other with the next car right behind it putting that their foot down too. In parallel 
we've got eight cars, eight drivers, all lined up together and you must all arrive at the destination at exactly the same split second. To try and keep in sync and not arrive out of sync we're not going to be able to fully put our foot down completely and therefore we've got a slight slower in transmission. We've got something known as bit rate and something known as board rate and what we've been talking about in terms of the speed of this transmission is bit rate. So this is the speed at which data is transmitted serial, serially and it's measured in bits. So bit rate is the number of bits transmitted per second. So with the bit rate you take into consideration how many bits are there that are transmitted per second. We've got something alternative to that, which is board rate. And this is the number of signal changes per second. Now, board rate and bit rate are related. So, bit rate is usually the same as the board rate. And this is when we encode one bit per signal change. Now, baseband is a type of communication where there's only two voltage levels. Um, and you may have heard of broadband well baseband is on the same kind of level as communication as what broadband is but baseband has just two voltage levels where broadband has a range of frequencies and this is why when we use broadband like you use broadband at home to connect to the internet that you can send video you can send data you can send emails you can get your TV you can send a phone line all on that same communication line because broadband offers a range of frequencies Baseband offers just two voltage levels, say one for zero and one for one. And here's a diagram here. And each of these rising edges and falling edges is the idea of a signal change. So every time the signal changes from one voltage level to another, so we've got a low voltage and a high voltage, two voltage levels, therefore we know it's baseband, there is one bit encoded per signal change. So this is an idea where bit rate is the same as board rate. So in what situation is bit rate the same as board rate? It is the same when there is just one bit per signal change. Now there can be a situation when bit rate and board rate are different. And here is an example. Bit rate can be higher than board rate if more than one bit is encoded in each signal change. So we've got more than one voltage level here and for every signal change we've got multiple bits encoded. And so notice on this that the bit rate is twice that of board rate. There are two bits for every board. Bandwidth is something we talk about when we talk about data transmission and bandwidth is the range of frequencies that a transmission medium can carry. So as I mentioned earlier, broadband. Broadband carries a large range of frequencies. So broadband has a high bandwidth and you've probably used these terms before without knowing the exact definition. The larger the range of frequencies, the greater the amount of data that can be transmitted over a fixed amount of time. So there's a direct relationship between bitrate and bandwidth. The higher the bandwidth, the greater the bitrate. The higher the bandwidth, the more bits that can be transmitted per second. Whenever we're dealing with data transmission, we come across latency. Now latency is the time delay that occurs between the moment something is initiated and the moment its first effect begins. It's basically how long does it take for data to travel from the source to the destination. But this is the definition to learn and this is a typical exam question. Whenever we're dealing with data transmission we talk about protocols. Now a protocol is a set of agreed rules and signals that relate to the communication between devices and components. When we're looking at the internal components computer system, we talk about the protocols that's used. We're going to look at, say, networking protocols, and you may have heard of TCP IP before. 
and we're going to look at lots of different protocols and protocols is an agreed set of rules for data communication now going back to our data transmission there's two ways data is transmitted one is asynchronous and the other is synchronous this relates to serial mode for sending data so our asynchronous transmission this is where one character is sent at a time and the character has a start bit a stop bit and a parity bit so you can imagine our character our um, let's take a 7 bit ASCII code we'll add a parity bit to that to give it 8 bits we'll add a start bit and we'll add a stop bit so therefore there's 10 bits that's transmitted now in set asynchronous transmission mode what happens the start bit is there to alert the receiving device that it's about to receive some data and it synchronizes the system clock this ensures that the receiving device and the sending device are working at the same clock speed and so it can therefore process the data if you imagine um, the fetch execute cycle and the internal components they're all running in rhythm to the system's clock and therefore if we're bringing data in and we're bringing that onto the system bus of the new device it needs to be synchronized with the clock and that's what the start bit does the board rate at the receiving end has to be set up to the same as the senders we need to be getting the same number of bits per signal change this is usually used by PCs fast and economical for relatively small amount of data so the start bit indicates we're starting the transmission the stop bit indicates it's the end of transmission and we can now process the data here's a diagram here's the data that's been sent this is group look here's the data a start bit a parity bit a stop bit the start bit indicates to the receiving device that it's about to send some data the data is sent the parity bit is used to check the correctness of the data and to indicate whether there's been an error or fault in transmission and then whether the, the sending device needs to send it again and the stop bit indicates to the receiving device that that is the end of the transmission and the receiving device can now process that data and that's the important thing it indicates that we can now process that data alternatively we've got synchronous transmission synchronous enables whole blocks of data to be sent in a time sequence now this is using the computer's internal clock to control the rate of transmission there's no need for start and stop bits for this one basically they synchronize their clocks for the whole duration of transmission now this is less error prone because you're not stopping and starting and indicating we can now process but it is much faster because you're not having to send a start and a stop bit the problem is that it will only go as fast as the fastest device and for the entire duration of data transmission one of those machines could potentially be slightly slowed down now synchronous is typically used in the CPU e.g. as part of the buses so asynchronous a start bit and a stop bit indicate the start and the end of data transmission they indicate when it is possible to start processing that data they only synchronize clocks for the duration of that data that's been transferred synchronous the devices are continually synchronized for the entire duration of data transmission lastly in this section on communication methods we're going to look at handshaking now handshaking is a chat is a type of protocol now we talk about the handshaking protocol and this is the exchange of signals between devices to establish the readiness to send or receive data now this sometimes pops up as a, a little conversation that the devices have so you can imagine it a computer and a printer and the computer says printer are you ready to receive some data and the printer says yes go ahead and the computer sends the data the printer then says thank you very much message received end of transmission and the printer returns back to a ready state alternatively the computer may say are you ready to receive some data and the printer will say no I'm out of paper and the computer says oh I will wait and that is handshaking